All right, so I think it's the uh, starting time, at least according to my computer. Um, so this, uh, as the little uh, blurb on the agenda link said, uh, what I was hoping to do is to talk for about 10 minutes about software citation principles, and then to have the rest of the time for some discussion and some uh, questions and, and comments about kind of whether this makes sense, how you would actually use it, if you would use it, if your organizations would use it, and a few other things. Um, so just to, to start off then, um, I think the one of the key pieces, uh, key things is to think about how software is used in research. And so this is kind of a very simplified diagram of, of research as a subject. Um, it's not exactly right, but it's good enough for this, I think. And the key thing that happens is that there's two places, really three places that research, uh, that software shows up. Um, so if we have this loop of creating a hypothesis, getting some resources in order to look at that hypothesis, actually doing the research, uh, publishing the results, and gaining recognition that lets you then continue this loop. Uh, there's some software that shows up as things that you actually build just to do the research. And there are other software that you need to get ahead of time in order to do the research. It's something that came from somebody else. Um, and some of the software that you build may be a product that you want to share with other people. And for the purpose of software citation, we're mostly concerned with the infrastructure software, right? The things that you're getting that you want to cite that you've gotten, the things that you're giving to somebody else that somebody else may want to cite when they use it later, and not as much the stuff that you're building internally that you're the only one that's using at that point. Right? When, it, when it moves from the, the blue circle to the red circle, then it becomes important to publish it and share it in citation and starts to play a role. Okay, so if that makes sense. Yep, okay. Uh, so the reason that we're talking about software citation is that software scientific research is becoming more open and more digital. And that means that there is more potential for collaboration and the outputs being digital makes them easier to share. Uh, people spend a lot of time developing software and data. The efforts aren't recognized or rewarded. I think I'm preaching to the choir. Um, and, and in terms of papers, we collect citations for papers very systematically, and we do this extremely well today. Um, and we build metrics based on that, H indices, other things like that. Um, but we don't really do this for software and data. And we hypothesize that if we could better measure the contributions um, in things like citations and impact and metrics, that would lead to rewards and incentives for people to actually build more software and data and to share it. Uh, it would lead to better career paths and more willingness for people that are, let's say, faculty members to join software development communities and other things like that. Um, and it would lead to more sustainable software in the end. Okay, and so having said that, um, we have the fact, again, that, that the citation system was really created for papers and books. And so we have to do one of two things. We either have to jam software into the current citation system, um, or we have to rework the citation system completely. And the, uh, the approach that we've taken is to focus on the first one because the second one is, is too hard. Um, even though I think a lot of people would say the second one is really the right thing to do, um, but it's, it's just not something that we can see how we we're going to do in a year. Uh, and that was part of what we wanted to do here. Um, so the challenge then is not just how to identify software in a paper, but how to identify software that's used in the research process in a way that makes it citable. Okay, um, if we look at software citation today, uh, software and other resources appear in very inconsistent ways. Uh, James Hallison did this nice uh, paper where he looked at 90 articles in the biology literature, and he found seven different ways that software was mentioned inside those papers. Right, from uh, citing publications about the software, citing the user's manual for the software, citing the name or the website of the software, um, citing the software like it was just a thing, like an instrument, uh, having a URL in the text, which might be a GitHub URL, uh, having the name of the software in the text, and sometimes not even having the name. And actually, this was one that confused me at, at one point, and I said, how do you know that there's software if you don't have a name? <laughs> and James's answer was that the paper says, we used software to do this. <laughs> but it doesn't say anything more than that. So, um, in people when they've looked at, at data and facilities and tried to see how they're cited have gotten similar results, that there's, there's no consistency and things are, are pretty dramatically under, um, under acknowledged. Okay, so, uh, so in July, uh, Force 11 started the software citation working group um, that uh, Arvind Smith and I were co-leading. Uh, Arvind was at GitHub at that time. Uh, in the WISPI 3 meeting that was in September, uh, Kyle Niemeyer and I were leading a credit and citation working group, and we realized that these really were overlapping groups, and we brought the two groups together. 
and we ended up with about 55 people in the in the combined group. Uh, we did everything on GitHub primarily and used Force 11 as a mailing list. Uh, we reviewed community practices and developed use cases, drafted a software citation principles document starting with the data citation principles that had been published probably a year or a year and a half earlier, and updated them based on the use cases and, and a lot of working group discussion and community feedback and review of a draft and a workshop. Uh, and all the discussion, uh, sorry, I shouldn't say all the discussion, almost all the discussion was through GitHub issues. Some of it was through hypothesis, so through annotations on, a current, on one of the documents. Um, but we tried to make sure that everything was tracked and everything was clear about what people were saying and, and what we were doing in response. Uh, and we came up with six principles uh, and some motivation and a summary of the use cases and some related work and some discussion and some recommendations. And we submitted this to uh, PeerJ Computer Science and it was reviewed and modified uh, many times, I think three, um, and it's now published, and so that's the document that you can see, and it's in the agenda page as well. I will say one of the other things that was interesting about this process is PeerJ came back to us and they said, would you like us to publish the review process as well? And we said, sure, that's fine. Um, so the reviews are public, and our response to the reviews are public from both times, so it's, it's been a very open process, which has been nice. So let me just talk about what the principles are then. Sorry, not that fast. Uh, so first is importance, and importance says that software should be considered a legitimate and citable product of research. Uh, software citations should be accorded the same importance in the scholarly record as citations of other research products, such as publications and data. Uh, they should be included in the metadata of the citing work, in the reference list of a journal, for example, and shouldn't be omitted or separated. Uh, software should be cited on the same basis as any other research product. Right? The authors should choose what the appropriate software products are to cite based on the work that they're doing. And I think this is pretty straightforward, and I would guess that there probably isn't much disagreement with this. Um, credit and attribution says that software citation should facilitate giving scholarly credit and normative legal attribution to all contributors uh, without saying anything about exactly what that style is that makes that happen. Uh, unique identification says that the software citation should include a method for identification that's machine actionable, globally unique, interoperable, and recognized by the right people in the community and preferably by the general public. Um, I will say that we recommend later that DOIs be the identifiers that are used in general. Um, we had a bunch of discussion about GitHub URLs and about other things and permanence and, uh, and, and other things, and we can talk about why, but, but DOIs is where we came in, in terms of what the right thing is today. Um, but it's not quite right at the level of a principle that's may not change over time, so it's more a, a recommendation than a discussion, whereas this is the principle. Um, persistence says that the unique identifiers and the metadata describing the software should persist even if the software goes away. Right? So if the software is on GitHub and the uh, developer takes it off GitHub uh, for some reason and it is gone, uh, we'd like the identifier to still say this is what the software was, this is what the version was, these were the developers, things like that. Uh, ideally, it might point to a new place where the software lives after GitHub goes out of business and everything moves somewhere else or whatever happens. Uh, software citation should facilitate access to the software itself and to associated metadata. Um, and it should allow people and machines to make informed use of the reference software. So one of the things that comes out of this is that we don't just mean open source software here. This could be commercial software. This could be closed source software. Uh, whatever it is, we'd like a way of saying, here's where the software came from and here's how you can get that software. Not necessarily free, but that there's some way that you can get to it. Or if you can't get to it, at least it's this is where it is and, and why you can't get to it if it's, uh, let's say, it's proprietary in some way. And then last is specificity. Uh, that says that software citation should facilitate identification of and access to the specific version of the software that was used. Uh, and the identification should be as specific as necessary using version numbers or revision numbers or variants such as platforms or whatever is right in this case, in your case. Okay, so that's really all that I'm going to say about what we've done. Um, I have a bunch of kind of questions that I'd like to, to leave as the, the things that we would talk about. Um, right? Questions, do these make sense to you? Right? If so, would you be willing to endorse this? Could you apply these principles in your own work? Um, if, if so, how? If not, why not? Or is what else would you need? Um, would this make sense for your organization? If you're in a university, um, would the, let's say you're in an RSE group, would the RSE group say that this is the thing that we'd like the RSEs to do? Or would the university administration say this is the thing we would like to use as uh, 
as promotion and tenure criteria, right? citations as opposed to some other factor. Um, and what are the problems with all this? So that's really the, the quick 10 minutes that I wanted to, to give about this. Um, just as a, uh, as a way of, uh, I guess that's, I don't know, that's probably not really legible on the back, is it? No. Okay. Uh, sorry? The title? Okay, the titles are all that I really meant, so okay. So I just wanted everything on one slide, sorry, and I'll use this one. Um, so having said that, I guess I'm also curious if there would be anybody that might be willing to, to volunteer to take some notes. Okay, thank you. Yes? So Yeah, I, I'm sorry. So I guess I, maybe I should have uh, also put this slide up, um, which which basically says that we're we're basically done as a working group right now, having come up with these principles. And as I said in the lightning talk yesterday morning, um, there will be a software citation implementation group that will start, and we'll actually try to do some of these things. And so one of the things it might do is to try to work with publishers and say. Right, this is language that you might suggest to your reviewers who are, who have software is that these things should be checked or something like that. Um, so I completely agree with you. It just it's something that just hasn't happened, and I think the fact that there aren't any community standards means that right people may just say right we use software. But, but yeah. I think there's also a issue that come up in that you didn't say we we you know, work. Software to let them do the research. But there's a lot, I guess, you, the, the, the research in their own mind decide that is the important bit to mention or something. But that's a bit of a grey zone. There might be some things that you would do, oh, yes, absolutely, I needed that. It's not just another kind of stuff that doesn't get picked up. Time, I just wrote because it's really difficult to unless it's something that you laughed out of. Uh, yeah. Software, right. So, so I will say that there's um, there's kind of a dispute, I think, or, or a debate about what's appropriate to say in in a method section of a paper, right? And this is well. So I think some people think that the method should should explain exactly what was done in a way that somebody, ideally, somebody that's not really knowledgeable about the field, can repeat what was done. Uh, maybe if you go back a step that somebody knowledgeable and experienced in the field can can certainly repeat what was done. Um, and I think there's a question about how specific that has to be, right? And it's, I mean, in some ways it's like right, mathematical proofs that, right, that, that there's some question about how much detail you need to show. And so I, I don't know what the answer to that is. And in some cases actually saying we used software maybe is appropriate, but I if it's something that's obvious in the context, but I, I don't know. So. Yeah, um, so what, what's, the, what's your position on citing the photograph and using the software on top of citing the software? So I'm thinking, typically, I use software which are collections of different type of system steps, and have different type of filters, and have different type of whatever. So you would say the method, you know, I use software this, citation of that software. And in that software, we use that technique followed by that technique followed by that technique. In each case, each by itself, you typically have a paper which I can explain explain that. And you don't go into detail of explaining the whole paper because that's exactly what you're saying. So it's not really citation of this. So you, know, you still want probably a citation of the software, as you said, because you've got the fact that you need to put all of these like, together and make a nice GUI and all of that stuff around. 
the menu will show up the immediate setting of the sign to each one and get right on the Yeah, I, what's, what's, you know, what, 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 what I don't think we have an answer to that. I think we would, uh, for that one, we would, I think, go back to the importance principle and say that it's up to the author to decide which of those things are important enough that they should be cited. So just to, I guess just to, right. So I, I was just going to say kind of two things. Um, so one one is that we actually um, want people to cite software, not to cite software papers. So I think that's somewhat important, uh, and it's a little bit different than what you were saying. Um, the the second thing is that if there is software that uses other software within it, then we expect that when that software itself is published it's going to talk about the software that he uses. And so you don't have to talk about all the things that that's using. Just as if you're using software, you're not going to talk about what compiler you use to build it or what operating system it's running on or what I.O. library. But, but in some cases, if it, right, if it's something where there's a lot of choices and you're just picking out a subset of the functionality you're using, then maybe it is appropriate to. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the things I think about the contention that the sort of principles that come up is between citing the specific version that you use and accumulating the credit over the kind of lifetime of the software. Yeah, so that that's actually a, um, I think that's a little bit of a different point. Uh, I, I mean, I completely agree with you that that's a problem. And the way that we're thinking about that is that there's two possible solutions to that. So one is the idea of a group identifier, which is something that doesn't exactly exist now, but something that would say that this is a collection of versions and that we want to understand the citation of any of those elements, but we want to treat them as if they were the same in terms of credit. Um, the other is that uh, within the metadata for a DOI, we can have relations to other DOIs. So we can have the one thing as a successor of another or as a child. I don't remember what the right exact verbiage is. But uh, uh, so, so there are ways that you could look at one piece of software and try to understand the citations of other pieces, other later versions through that. And so I think there's two different technical ways this could be done. One is, one is possible today but isn't really implemented. The other is not really possible today but could be in the future. Um, and we're, in some ways, we're trying to focus again on the things that we can solve more easily today, which is just trying to get people to actually cite software. Discussion. Um, one of the problems we have, uh, and I'm saying this as someone who 
runs a journal of software papers is that in some sense the way that we deal with um, any sort of research that runs for a long time or any sort of software that runs for more than one version is broken just now. And I think the thing that's really interesting to me with software citation is how do you come up with an implementation that makes it really easy for people to provide machine readable references to software that can start doing the sorts of things that you're, you're looking to do, which is create, create an idea of how, say, versions change in time. So as you say, you know, version one was funded by EPSRC, version two was funded by DBSRC. Um, but you really want to cite the thing itself. How do you then resolve down that? But my, my kind of thing whenever, whenever people get into these arguments is we still can't do anything unless we're able to create that reference. So, so what's the easiest way of creating that reference system that allows the use case you have to be built on top of it? Yep. There was a comment in there, the principal of energy in the discussion further down, and we mentioned it a little, that the idea of getting credit to the software that your software uses should be simpler to the idea of you cite the paper you use directly, not the various things it cites. Um, which works for papers because the paper actually cites things. Mm -hmm. But software doesn't tend to cite software that is used. It's hard enough getting people to actually specify in their setup.py or whatever the exact versions of stuff that they, the software needs, let alone providing citations to DOIs. So how do you see that, that situation might improve? It's funny, I was going to ask you the same question. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, so uh, as a developer, what would you do about this? Um, I mean, certainly in terms of specifying versions, you can say in your requirements file or whatever it's good practice to give which versions of which software you use, but that's a completely different way of specifying citations of the software that you use. So, and the DOI by itself doesn't include somewhere to hang off citations yeah. of what that has. Yeah. So, I, a standard place in a software tarball or something. Right. So, I think there's, I guess I would say that there's two, two things here potentially. Um, so one is that this, even though I don't really like the idea of software papers, um, this is something that software papers do. Um, the other is that I think that, um, that the groups that actually publish software, uh, the systems that publish software, uh, Zenodo and, and Figshare, um, really should have a way of putting in citations, right? Because they have a lot of metadata that you can put in now, right? About, but, but that's one piece that you can't currently. So I think that's that's potentially something that we should be working towards. So again, like, did you say earlier that you can use DOI to reference DOIs? Is that a feature? Uh, DOIs are capable of referencing DOIs, okay. so but they're, but it's not used very much. Um, yeah. So within the DOI metadata, there's uh, there are you can have relationships to other DOIs. Hmm. Okay, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm, I actually, I'm not familiar with that, but that's, okay, thank you. Okay. Was it, sorry, the name of that again? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I have to say, I, well, I was just going to say that this is always, this is confusing to me because if I go into like my library catalog, right, and I try to pick a book, uh, the hardback book and the paperback book and the, uh, the the Kindle book all have different identifiers and they have different records, which seems extremely strange as well. But. Okay. Okay. 
So let me uh, just, uh, rather than having kind of abstract discussion, so how many how many people here um, have written software papers? Okay, so the majority. Uh, and how many people here have ever published software itself directly? Have published software itself directly as opposed to a software paper? And have you done both for the same software? And why? Right. Sorry. <laughs> if, if there are two, if there are two possible ways of getting of getting um, reputation credit for your work, why not use both? Slightly. <laughs> 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 so, so the software paper says this software is built from these principles and users use it, and this is the this is a way to credit the other software that my software relies on. This is the reason why it's built like this, and this is what we do. That's quite different to say this is this. So that's why you can do both. And maybe like the the, the, um, the ideal case is to bundle together the software paper and the various versions so that you can say, let's have this piece of software and we follow that citation on the paper. And somehow that citation also takes you to the relevant version with some way of saying it has this new version. So for those who want to they know what was what was used two years ago to put this piece of paper to publish, that piece of version. Well if you're now doing something on top of it, extending this work, there's a new version of that work. So, so let so let me uh, let me try this again for a second. Um, so I'm also curious how many people have some something in their code that suggests how their work should be cited. Like a citation file or something in the README or something else. And does that point to the software paper or to the software or to both or or to the GitHub repository? Or? Yeah. So of course, I mean, then this uh, for the actual project, we have to set extra time to post the paper. And the reason is for that project, we can actually, uh, we have not archived software on Zenodo. The main reason being that it's in the So, uh, how many people review papers? And how many people have have complained about the way software is referenced in a review that they've done? I mean, did that work well? Did you get some resolution you were satisfied with? In the one case, it was so bad for other reasons, it got rejected. Do you uh, do you feel like in general the that um, journals are giving instructions that are useful in this regard? If we if we take out the software paper journals. I, I don't know. 
but certainly where some journalists who have essentially types into rules which almost make it impossible to say anything that's not mm-hmm. yeah. So you can't sell it. They, they just it would not our, our house styles to allow you to make it something really different. Maybe. Yep. Yep. I'm sorry. What Gus is working on? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Gus, Chris, yeah. Okay. So we, and the nice thing is now this is an official policy, and we're going to be able to do that. So we, you know, we can use something like this for other journals where we can, of course, to do that. So I will say, I think we have uh, three minutes left until the next um, session starts in this room. Uh, I would um, I would say that if anybody is really interested, if, if you see, again, issues that make this, that mean that software citation as we've described it isn't going to work for you, um, we'd be very interested in understanding why if, uh, and ideally if you open a GitHub issue that says something about the problem, that would be great. Um, if you have suggestions as to ways that we could try to push this idea through your community, through journals, through publishers, through institutions, um, that would be great as well. Uh, as I said uh, yesterday morning, um, I hope that in uh, within a month or so we'll start this implementation group. And if you're actually if you're interested in getting involved in that and trying to make this happen in some way, um, sign up and be a member of the current working group, and that will make sure that you're at least told when the implementation group starts, and then you can join that group. Um, yeah, and that might be enough for right now. I don't know, any other, any kind of closing comments? Okay, well, we'll give everybody two minutes to switch rooms if you're switching rooms. <laughs>